What we're looking at here is the specimen of the heart and this chamber that has been opened for you is the left ventricle. And this very grossly abnormal area is the apex of the left ventricle. Here is the aorta and the aortic valve and we're just going to turn it around to orientate ourselves. This would be the right ventricle posteriorly. Coming back again into the left ventricle. Okay, so focusing on the gross abnormality, what we are looking at is a dilatation at the apex of the left ventricle. So whenever you have a vascular structure, such as a blood vessel or even uh, the ventricles of the heart, which shows an abnormal outpouching or dilatation, this is known as an aneurysm. Now, can we tell by looking at this specimen what caused the aneurysm? Actually, we can. Uh, if you notice, you'll see that the wall of the left ventricle here is much thinner than over this area. So this part is relatively normal. But over here, the wall is very thin because there was a previous myocardial infarction or heart attack. The tissue died and then there was healing. And because the heart muscle is not able to regenerate, as you will learn in your chapter on healing and repair, there is fibrosis. This makes the wall thinner. This makes the wall weaker as well as less elastic and therefore prone to aneurysmal dilatation, especially because the pressure is very, very high with the blood flow within the left ventricle. Now let's focus on the pathology that is seen within the aneurysm itself. So we're going to magnify this area and we can see that over here there seems to be this layer of darkish material and a bit uh, layered with paler areas. So what we're looking at is actually a thrombus lining the wall of the aneurysm. The dark areas are composed of red blood cells and the pale areas here, these are composed of fibrin. So fibrin, if you remember, is the actual ultimate product of the coagulation cascade or the clotting process. And you have these layers and these are called the lines of zan. These are characteristic in arterial thrombosis. So the thrombus has formed obviously within this aneurysm. We do not see any thrombus elsewhere in the left ventricle. Now why does the thrombus form here? This comes back to the etiology of thrombosis in the first place. If you remember, one of the features that predisposes to thrombosis is turbulent blood flow or abnormal blood flow. There are three components to Virchow's triad. One of them is abnormal blood flow. So in this case, because the blood is coming in here and sort of doing all sorts of funny things within this aneurysmal dilatation, there is turbulence and abnormal direction, and this gives rise to thrombosis. So within this single specimen, we are able to see the main pathology, which is a left ventricular aneurysm, the probable cause, which is previous healed myocardial infarction with weakening of the ventricular wall, and one of the complications due to turbulent blood flow, which is thrombosis.